air travel is notorious for its carbon footprint and a climate breakdown must be avoided if we're going to have a future but at the same time forcing people to stop flying simply isn't right so that leaves humanity with only one option invent carbon neutral air travel on top of that the air travel has to be capable of intercontinental flight so electric planes are going to seriously struggle and electric planes on top of that can only work with a propeller based propulsion system jet engines require combustion so obviously you're going to need some way of synthesizing fuels now I talk about how synthesized fuels could actually be used as energy storage as well as fueling infrastructure in my video on energy storage. Because of the types of fuels that are cheaper and easier to synthesize, the type of fuel that would be going through the jet engine would change from something like kerosene to probably something more like methane. Because when it comes to synthesizing fuels, generally the lighter and smaller the molecules are, the easier they are to synthesize from pretty much the base elements. For example, electro electrolyzing water will provide oxygen and hydrogen, which is the most basic fuel, really. Add carbon to that, and you've got methane, which is the next thing up. And this is the exact process that SpaceX are using for their Mars mission, when they eventually get round to doing that. The issue here is that synthesizing fuels is, by definition, energy expensive because you need to put in all the chemical energy plus a bit more because there will be losses in order to actually make the fuel to burn. So in order for this change to happen quickly enough, you would want a more efficient jet engine. Here is a oversimplified and probably quite badly done diagram of what a normal jet engine looks like. A jet engine uses a turbine to power the intake and this sucks in air to further power the jet engine. However, the turbine slows down the exhaust which reduces the exhaust velocity so therefore, according to the rocket equation, that makes the engine less efficient. Now, the rocket equation is used in rockets more than planes, obviously, because some of the plane's propellant is actually in the air around it, but it is the same principle. If you were to replace the turbine with an electric motor, then the exhaust would not be slowed down by a turbine because it doesn't exist. You can also increase the thrust because you don't have to worry about tearing apart or melting the turbine. This was one of the problems that plagued early jet engines. And because of the instant torque that the electric motor gives you, you can get a better spooling speed. These three benefits are ideal for VTOL, so whoops, I just made the F-35 obsolete with a short YouTube video. Mm, I don't need to worry, less than 20 people will see this, so the security of this YouTube video is probably better than Area 51. Ironically, the world's most famous secret research base. You're probably wondering, will this technology ever become a reality? Will you ever have an airline in which you can get on and fly anywhere carbon neutrally? Well, there's only three ways in which this could happen. One, I find a way to make this technology a reality, or get a chance to make this technology a reality. Mm. Almost certainly not going to happen. Two, an aviation en engineer sees this video. Also, almost certainly not going to happen. Or three, some aviation engineer thinks of this independently. Well, that hasn't really happened yet that I know of. But they have come up with something similar. There's a link in the description to a TED talk in which they suggest a different possible idea. If you've watched the TED talk, you know that their turbine-powered electric plane will require the thrust to weight ratio of a superconductive electric motor to work. Thing is, when you're talking about the power to weight ratio of a superconductive electric motor, you actually need to talk about the cooling system and the amount of weight that that would add. Because there is no known superconductor that is capable of working at room temperature. Even the high temperature ones need to be kept in vats of liquid nitrogen and 
a container of liquid nitrogen plus a bunch of insulation is going to be heavy. Now, when you're relying on technology that doesn't exist and you have a decent budget, not a problem. You just invent the technology that doesn't exist and you're good to go. But when you're relying on science that doesn't exist, say room temperature superconductors, then you're out of your depth. And they are relying on room temperature superconductors, but only for the large scale, long range aircraft. Hmm, now what is it that a jet engine with an electrified intake does well? Uh, I think I know I mentioned earlier that it ha would have a good thrust to weight ratio in comparison to a version of itself that uses a turbine for reasons that I mentioned earlier. And if you want to get really crazy with this engine, because of the lack of a turbine, you don't need to have a subsonic exhaust velocity which most jet engines need because otherwise you have shock waves running through the turbine not great but when the turbine doesn't exist you could say use a mechanism similar to a rocket nozzle to actually change a subsonic flow into a supersonic flow which means you would essentially be creating a rocket engine with an electric powered intake kind of like the rutherford engines on the electron rocket. The only difference with this technology is that instead of pumping in oxidizer which is inside the vehicle, it's sucking in and compressing air. But this rocket engine style nozzle design would be a lot louder than a more conventional nozzle design of a jet engine just without the turbine. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on the technology that would make air travel carbon neutral if anyone had any interest in developing it.